all brands and musicians and companies in the world are now considering what their metaverse strategy is. And typically a metaverse strategy can lean either towards we're providing an experience or we're providing a revenue generating opportunity or a mixture of both. Welcome to the Innovation and Compliance Podcast, part of the Compliance Podcast Network. Join us every week as we talk with industry innovators who are making compliance to help business run more efficiently and at the end of the day, more profitably. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox back for another episode. And today we are going to take things in a little bit different direction, but in a direction I think is incredibly prescient for everyone in the corporate world and everyone in the B2B world. Have with me James Shannon. James is with Zone, but he's got a background that's very different than the typical guests we have. So James, with that somewhat cryptic introduction, <laughs> uh, could you tell us a little bit about your professional background and what your current role is? Absolutely, Tom. And thanks so much for having me on. I can't wait to speak about this wild, crazy world that we found ourselves in, in Web 3.0. So my professional background is kind of a mishmash, as you've indicated. My professional background, if we're just focusing on that, is probably in the sales category. I started my career selling enterprise-grade technology, security technology, actually, to the likes of companies like EY, Microsoft, and Facebook. But at the same time, I was also running a music business startup, and that startup provided services to Cuban musicians. And specifically, our mission was to bring those musicians over from Cuba and establish them as artists in North America. So we'd give them record label contracts, we'd connect them with managers. We were really a production company for Cuban artists scene specifically. Over the course of that period of time, as I was working in both of those industries, I realized that I was doing both at about 50% capacity and neither of them were receiving my full attention. So I ended up following my passion, which is music business and mixed in technology along the way. And that's how I found myself to where I am today, running a music business technology startup. Could I even throw in some creativity and innovation that I saw in both of those parts of your background that you brought to your current job? So let me maybe just start with the basics. So what is an NFT? An NFT stands for non-fungible token, fungible being the operative word here. Fungible means that this token cannot be exchanged for any other value, currency, or type of token. And the benefit and the reason that that is important is that NFTs have been attached to digital assets in order to make them scarce using blockchain technology. And the reason that that's important in the world we live in is because we are moving to an ecosystem and a reality in which we place much more importance on our digital selves and the ways that we interact in the digital environment. And therefore, having a piece of technology like an NFT that can attach value through scarcity to digital assets is becoming increasingly important. So what is the metaverse? The metaverse is an ever amorphous term that comes into my daily sphere, and I find that it changes definitions every day. So as opposed to telling you what we think it is today, I think I'll focus on what it is in the future in an ideal situation. In an ideal situation, the metaverse is an interconnected series of virtual worlds that can be accessed through mixed reality devices and blockchain technology. All right. How about Web3? Web3 is a lot of things as well. You'll realize that as we go through these answers, it's hard to give concise ones because there's so many definitions and it's such new technology. But in my mind, Web 3.0 is an evolution of the last two stages of the internet. The first being Web 1.0, which gave us World Wide Web technology, the internet, and connected the world with communication, email, and web pages. Web 2.0 was an iteration on that technology which made the internet more user-friendly. It was largely an innovation in front-end technology. So we were making websites more attractive. We were making front-end UI more user-friendly. And that gave birth to what many call the participative social web. And as you can imagine, 2004, which is when many people coined the start of Web 2, 
that's when social media really took off because we're seeing user-friendly platforms like Facebook come into our sphere and many more people being able to use them. Web 3.0 is a collection of technologies that is now built on top of the internet that we know today. Specifically, Web 3.0 will be defined by blockchain, mixed reality, AI, and dynamic content. The big problem that we see right now with Web 3.0 is that these technologies are very difficult to use. So much in the same way that the internet was difficult to use in the mid to late 90s and Web 2.0 came in and solved that problem, we're now seeing the same thing happen with Web 3.0. And one more definition, augmented reality social media platforms. Augmented reality is different than virtual reality. Both are categorized as mixed reality technologies, but it's important to differentiate between the two. Augmented reality is overlaying digital information on top of the physical world. So for example, if you are using your cell phone and you're a social media user, if you go onto Instagram or Snapchat and you're familiar with face filters or lenses, which place digital information on top of your face through the front facing camera, That is a use of augmented reality because it's combining the physical and the digital worlds. Augmented reality social media would be a combination of AR, augmented reality, and social media interfaces. So likes, comments, shares, discovery feeds. Today, this is being used again in in conjunction with Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok to some degree. But the platforms of the future will see augmented reality be a much more central place and feature of their social platforms. So now could I maybe move to how does Zone integrate or tie all of these together in a coherent way or with a coherent framework? So if you recall, I mentioned just a little bit ago that one of the big problems right now with Web 3.0 for all but the 1% of people who are very familiar with this market is that it's incredibly difficult to use. Even myself, who is relatively new to this space, when I first heard about what a crypto wallet was, or a metaverse, or a mixed reality environment, these words can very easily pass over your head and and not really have any kind of understanding with you. And so what we're seeing happening is an entire world of brands, artists, creators, fans, people, all racing to stake their claim inside of Web 3.0 and the metaverse. But what they're finding is that it's very difficult to do so. The tools are complex, platforms are not very well developed, and most technology companies in the Web 3.0 space are leading with blockchain first. They're gating access through NFTs. They're making wallets a prerequisite to using the platform. What we believe at Zone is that in order to encourage mass adoption of Web 3.0 technology, whatever type of user experience you provide to the world has to be something that they can get up and running in a matter of 10 to 15 seconds. Today, people are most familiar with getting up and running on new platforms in the social media realm. You download TikTok and or Instagram, and you have a profile and you have friends and content in 15 seconds tops. So Zone is trying to bridge the gap between those social media platforms that we know so well and the Web 3.0 technology that we don't. Zone is a Web 2.5 social application that merges the familiar interfaces that we're used to on current social platforms with immersive and blockchain technology. So specifically, what you can do inside of Zone is log in and create a 3D world. Those 3D worlds are called zones. Inside of each zone, you can feature digital collectibles, you can feature NFTs, you can connect with friends as avatars or as profile pictures, and you can share those experiences within a social network that we've created. James, when I looked at your website and did a little research in preparation for this podcast, the zone site, because of perhaps your background and your interest, as well as others on your team, really seem to be designed to help musicians or other creatives develop a community around whatever they were producing. And so I sort of thought that was a business to consumer or B2C. So I wanted to ask, 
does the zone solution or the platform really allow a creative, whether that be a musician, whether it be an author like myself, whether it even be a podcaster, help to create a community on it to continue Great. engagement? So there's a reason that we're working with musicians specifically in this platform. And then there's also a reason that we're helping people build communities within Zone. So I'll tackle the first part of that question first. Musicians have the ability to make people move. When I say move, I mean they have the ability to encourage people to take action. And that happens in both physical space and also the digital space. If you think about a concert, you are very inclined to go to a physical concert to go see your favorite artist because music is an industry of passion. In the digital world, the concept and principles are the same. Musicians have the ability to encourage people to take action in new spheres that they're not accustomed to. So we've seen over the last year, many artists working in Web 3.0 in blockchain and having their audiences and fans come over to follow them in these new platforms quite effectively. You look at Kings of Leon, Steve Aoki, Dead Mouse. These are all artists who have engaged with NFT, blockchain, or mixed reality technology and had their fan bases come join them. So for us, music is a way of encouraging people and users to make the leap into Web 3.0 and to download an application and to start building their own worlds. On the flip side, I think it's important to touch on how Zone helps with community building. When you think about what a Zone is, it's a 3D world that is used to show off who you are within a Web 3.0 context. So you can showcase your collectibles, your NFTs, your avatars, the events, the digital and immersive events that you've visited. But more importantly, this is a place and not just a profile. And in places, you can create community. You can socialize with people. So each zone has the ability to host an event, to host a community gathering. And our hope and our goal is that each community will start to gravitate towards people and places that best suit them. So in terms of how we would work with podcasters, with users, with regular people, it would be in the community building aspect. James, it sounds like one of the things you are articulating is that you're helping musicians really build a much broader and deeper audience experience. Is that a fair assessment? That is definitely a fair assessment. And I think that the reason that we've started segmenting that corner of the market is that we've noticed that all brands and musicians and companies in the world are now considering what their metaverse strategy is. And typically a metaverse strategy can lean either towards we're providing an experience or we're providing a revenue generating opportunity or a mixture of both. So in our world, what we're essentially doing is we're saying a few things to these businesses. Number one, the problems that you face are that existing metaverse or Web3 style platforms are very difficult to use. And if the goal is to onboard your entire corporate environment, your audience, your fan base, then you have to consider what is the least or easiest barrier to entry that you can provide to them. The second is that we're creating spaces. And ultimately, what everybody likes is a space that they can call their own. In the personal creator world or the the individual, that space is small. That space is a place where they can show off what matters to them. But in the world of a business, that space is also somewhere where they can show off their brand, their identity. And so it's important to have the flexibility to actually build those spaces, but to do so in a platform that makes it easy for others to interact with it. I really like the focus you have on the user experience. Many times in the corporate world, we will come up with an innovation and we will implement that innovation. It looks cool. It feels cool. It may smell cool, but the user experience is not cool. So the innovation really goes nowhere. And to start with the user experience mm -hmm. and back it forward from there, I think is incredibly important. Let me roll back to just NFTs for a moment and ask you, where do you see the evolution of NFTs or now, having gone through and perhaps got a better understanding of the entire ecosystem, are NFTs a part of an ecosystem and you have to consider the metaverse really in all of your decisions and you can't silo out an NFT? And if 
if that's not the right question, answer the right question. <laughs> I think it's definitely the right question. I know. I think I know what you're getting at. To us, the way we think about an NFT is that it's a gateway to the metaverse. It is the key that unlocks the metaverse. And so in most situations, when you're doing something Web 3.0 or metaverse related, there's always going to be at least an NFT component. And the reason for that, it goes back to what I said earlier, is that when you live and operate in a digital ecosystem, you have to think about the importance of digital assets. And the only way that you can attach scarcity and value to a digital asset is through an NFT. So I think that there will be a place for NFTs in, in almost all styles of metaverse activations. How prominent they are is really something that we help businesses define. And it depends on, do you want to produce revenue? Do you want to open access to the masses? Or have this be an open event where anyone can come? All of these things come into you know the NFT strategy, I would say. To answer your question specifically, in two to five years, I see NFTs evolving dramatically. What a lot of people don't realize is that the Web 3.0 community moves incredibly quickly. Information strategies are changing daily. And I think that that's a reflection of how fast the technology moves itself. So what we're going to see is NFTs start to have really clear-cut utility in both the real world and the digital world. What do I mean by utility? Today, we're very familiar with the famous NFT stories about Beeple or Board Ape Yacht Club that have sold pictures of artwork or pictures of apes for millions of dollars. Those were sold without very much utility in the sense that if you purchased one, you can't really do anything with that NFT other than watch it appreciate in value and make a return on your investment. The days of really high investment and high return NFTs are not going to be the same. What we're going to see happening are companies, brands, and strategies that combine the NFT token with a use case. So in the world of music, for example, an NFT is going to be looked at as a token that gives you access to a fan club. So for your favorite artist, they can release an NFT. And if you purchase that NFT, you get access to an exclusive fan club that unlocks content, backstage passes, discounts on future shows, and content before it's released to the public. There's value there in both the artist unlocking a new revenue stream, but also for the fan who really is passionate about that artist. In the world of sports, we'll start to see the same thing. NFTs, which give you uh, priority access to a football game where you can have seasons tickets for an NFT, but then also have discounts on future ticket sales. So I think we're going to start seeing that happen in the NFT world. Let me change the focus a fair amount and pose the following question. I have to get my notes to read it to you. Why is carbon neutrality sure. so critical to NFTs? The technical answer is that today with blockchain technology, not all blockchain technology, but with a lot of it, there is a very high environmental cost, energy cost for verifying a transaction on the blockchain. So if I want to go purchase an NFT, which in the blockchain world is called minting an NFT, then I have to stake my claim on the blockchain. That transaction has to be verified by a group of computers that are situated around the world who are saying essentially yes to that transaction. That processing power is high. And therefore, the energy required and thus the environmental impact of that transaction is quite high. And so that is what a lot of people have latched onto as a big negative for blockchain technology, which I agree with. What a lot of people don't see is that this problem is actively being solved by advances in the tech. There is no technology out there today that hasn't gone through a period of friction. And that's where we are right now. But carbon neutrality in NFTs is something that all technology, all chains are working towards. And the specific technical way that they're doing that is by instead of using the entire blockchain network to authenticate each individual transaction, thus incurring high energy costs per they're grouping those transactions into blocks. Every one of those blocks is then only having to be approved a single time. 
thus reducing the amount of energy and the reduced the amount of carbon impact for each transaction. Well, James, unfortunately, we are near the end of our time for this episode, but I was wondering if our listeners wanted any more information on yourself, on Zone, or really any of the topics we've touched on today, where would be the best place for them to go or perhaps start? I would say just head over to our website. It's zone, X-O-N-E dot G-G. That's zone dot G-G. We've got all of our links on there. You can probably find my email too if you want to reach out, but that would be the best place to start. James, I wanted to thank you again for taking the time to visit with me. This has been one of the most interesting podcasts I've done in quite some time, and I hope we can continue this conversation. Thank you very much, Tom. I really appreciate the time and really appreciate talking with you. If you want to stay up to date on the latest innovations in compliance and help your business run more efficiently, subscribe to this podcast and help spread the word by leaving a review.